Brev 89 on sensor tube. Are you able to explain the situation between Palestine and Israel? Because I'm confused. <laughs> um, am I able to explain it? Uh, in short form, man, uh, where do we begin? Where do we begin? You can't start on October 7th. You can't start with the first Intifada in 2000. Basically, in short, uh, in 1947, 1948, uh, there's a declaration that gave split up Palestine, historical Palestine, which was under, under uh, the British Empire, into two different parts. 54% or something went to Israel to establish an Israeli Jewish state and 46 percent or so was to establish a palestinian state for the indigenous population the people that took over that region the zionists because we're zionists with they coerced the western world because of genocide of world war ii we deserve a land right and the way they sold it they sold it as uh land for a people with people without a land no what was it uh basically they sold it as if their, their mantras are, are low iq to say the least they sold it as oh there was nobody living there right but the promise that they made to the western world was that when they went there they would give equal rights to everyone everyone would have equal rights well they went in there they did the great nakba they expelled a shitload of hundreds of thousands of palestinians from their home they killed a shitload of people it was genocide ethnic cleansing the region right and they created hundred thousands of refugees that flooded into jordan syria egypt and into the gaza strip and the west bank and into lebanon right they set up a serious base in lebanon okay and this was unacceptable to the rest of the middle east especially the arab nations they said hey listen you can't just all of a sudden british empire comes there and gives us a land that's occupied by indigenous population to just the jews and most of them just european jews many of them not even jews to begin with they were zionists or a sect of jews european jews that surprisingly had their origin in the ukraine right that all of a sudden come in there expelled an indigenous population mass refugees into the neighboring nations destabilizing destabilizing those regions right for a while they try to come to some kind of agreement that hey listen everybody should have equal rights the, the zionists can't you can't ethnically cleanse the region palestinians said what the fuck is going on here who are these people that are just kicking us out of our villages and homes and taking over our lands and killing our people right and then there was a war in 1967 right which was sort of a you can look into it right and then the western world steps in and says oh we're gonna we're gonna put the united states and the uk in charge of bringing peace to the region we're neutral parties we're not taking sides the united states not taking sides they're not taking sides and we're going to try to bring peace to the middle east by creating a two-state solution right israel and palestine right and then they take over zionists get more power mainly through the 1970s through the neocons and through the reagan administration bush jr the dave camp of course and all this jazz and you know promised palestine uh, um, their state meanwhile in 1980 israel goes into lebanon bombs the shit out of beirut because the plo the palestinian liberation organization was based in Be um, beirut and they said okay plo can't be there so they bombed the shit out of a whole city that was known as the paris of the middle east right because they want the plo out of uh, beirut and the plo ends up going to tunisia right and then they they start funding the extremists and stuff divide and conquer and whatnot the whole the united states is a neutral uh neutral country that is going to try to help bring peace to the middle east and create a two-state solution the veil has been lifted and everyone knows now that the united states was not impartial they were 100 percent zionist as joe biden said he's a zionist as 
uh, Blinken says that Zionists just fund the shit out of Israel to continue their ethnic cleansing, right? And in the mid 2000s or 2000, there was an intifada, there was an uprising of Palestinians saying, "Look, man, we can't live in an apartheid state because it had become an apartheid state." Right, so Israel was functioning as an apartheid state for a number of decades in the 1960s, uh, 70s, 80s, 90s, full on apartheid state, right, just like South Africa. And then there's an uprising with Intifada 1 and 2 in the 2000s, right. And in the mid 2000s, the Gazans were allowed to have elections and they elected Hamas, and Hamas origin being Israel, Zionist was funding Hamas because they wanted to separate they wanted to break apart the one Palestinian government right from the West Bank and Gaza they figured they could divide and conquer right so there was elections in Gaza they elect Hamas which is really a resistance movement people uh, in the West are being lied to that it's a fanatical genocidal religious spawn you, you could be non-religious and join Hamas as long as you resist occupation and apartheid right that's in their doctrine, right? So in mid 2000s, they have elections in Gaza Strip. Hamas gets elected. Hillary Clinton comes along and says, "Well, we shouldn't have allowed free elections in Gaza because they elected the wrong people." Oops, D democracy. What democracy, right? So as soon as that happens, Israel, right? And by the way, before that, they occupied Gaza. They brutalized Palestinians. They murdered them. They raped them. They organ harvested them. They were taking Palestinians into prison and harvesting their organs and selling them. Israel has been one of the largest uh, black market organ, human organ suppliers to the world for decades, right? Whose organs? Palestinian organs, right? But we won't go down that rabbit hole, right? So as soon as Hamas gets elected into Gaza Strip, Israel says, democracy, no democracy, right? US says no democracy, Western world says no democracy. Gaza goes under complete blockade. Israel controls its water, electricity, food. Palestinians, fishermen, are not allowed to go beyond a certain amount of distance off the coast to fish for food, right? It reached a point where Israel was did the calculations of the mathematics and said, oh, there's this many Palestinians living in this region, and you could survive on this many calories per year so they allowed a certain amount of calories per person to go into gaza right i.e gaza was turned into a concentration camp right concentration camp and this continued uh, idf sniping people they tried multiple peaceful means palestinians to try to break this blockade and finally get the land the nation that were promised in 1948 right decades ago right what are some of the things they tried to do they did peaceful march israeli snipers sniped them killed uh healthcare workers nurses paramedics children shot them in the knees shot them in the head annihilated them right peaceful march right they started the BDS movement, boycott, divestment, sanctions movement, which is a peaceful movement, saying to the world, "Look, if you don't, you don't support Israeli apartheid, that Israel is holding Palestinians hostage in the Gaza Strip as a concentration camp. If you don't support what Israel is doing, if you don't support an apartheid nation, just like people didn't support apartheid Africa, Africa, don't buy." Israeli products that are made in occupied territory, BDS movement, boycott, divestment, sanctions movement. What happened? The Western world called that violence. Get that? That's huge, right? So Palestinians peacefully protested, got them shot, got them killed. They started an economic sanctions regime. Like you as a consumer should have the right, if you see a company that you don't agree with, for example, Coca-Cola having death squads, hiring death squads in Colombia to kill anyone that was an activist that was going against Coca-Cola siphoning out water, but, but maybe I won't buy Coca-Cola products, right? What happened? Western governments came along and said, oh, anybody that supports BDS movement is supporting violence. United States went as far as saying that any individual, any corporation, 
any national or international corporation that wants to do business, that wants to work for the United States government or its states must sign a document saying they don't support BDS movement. You follow? That includes teachers. So teachers in the United States, in most states, as far as I know, if they wanted to teach in elementary school and high school in an education center, they have to sign a document saying they don't support boycott divestment sanctions, right? Which is crazy. Just wrap your head around that, right? So Palestinians tried everything peaceful to try to break this blockade, free themselves from a concentration camp, and finally get what the world promised them, which was a nation, right? Under UN resolutions, everything should go back to the 1967 border, and Palestinians who were made refugees should have the right of return, right? Well, it wasn't going anywhere, right? The Western world was helping Israel to continue to commit genocide. Then we have October 7th. What happens then? Oh, the Western world is actually arming the genocidal regime of Israel to ethnically cleanse and genocide a whole people in Gaza, and they're going to go after the West Bank next. They're going to go after Lebanon next, Syria, Egypt, Sinai. They want the region, Saudi Arabia. They want a greater Israel. So where we are right now is the veil has been lifted for the majority of the world, global majority, because pre-October uh, 7th, there were still a lot of people that didn't know this history and still thought that Israel was, you know, the most idea was the more, most moral <laughs> army in the world. I don't know what reality that's from, right? Western corporate propaganda, right? And now that the global majority, including people in the Western world, are seeing what Israel is doing, what the West is doing in support of Israel committing genocide. The veil has been lifted and we realize who they are, which is the monsters they have been for decades, for decades. We just brushed it under the rug saying, well, World War II genocide, Holocaust, bad. Let the chosen people do what they want to other people. Well, that shit ain't flying no more, right? That shit ain't flying no more. That's the quick version. If you want a longer version, what you want to do is Norman Finkelstein. Let me see if I have a command for this. Gaza. Nope. Palestine. Nope. Uh, if someone reminds me in our Gilded server, uh, on our Gilded server, I'll put a command together for... Uh, on Twitch for Gaza and Palestine to provide information to Norman Finkelstein and uh, Max Blumenthal and Aaron Maté as to what's going on in that region and give a little context and history. Okay. And again, take everything I say with a grain of salt, but majority of what I said is um, pretty much fact and very few people deny it.